Wednesday night midweek Bible study. We're studying God's word. And I love this topic right here. Talks my, my father never had with me and talks my mother never had with me. Talks I mean, my, my you father. You are the first generation in your family to really seek to be really rooted in God at the next level, just not a church participant or the like, then this is like new ground. And, and so it's not always easy to find your way. And so um, I love this for the longest, we did this series called Hope Talks when we were when working with kids in Central Park, you know, and, and it was Hope Talks and it was based upon talks my father never had with me and talks my mother never had with me for the girls. And the beautiful thing about God's word is that we're able to have the wisdom of godly parents from God's word, which is really, really cool. Because you're saying, well, I really don't know what to talk with my sons about. And if we don't know, sometimes it's just foolishness. Sometimes it's just joking and, and that kind of deal. Um, even, even though we grew up, let's say, in the church, going to church, saying our prayers, it is so important to be discipled. That is to say that someone that has a life worth living that has grown mature in their faith, not mixing street and game recognized game, but has the wisdom of God to share. Wow, what a difference that makes in someone's life. So many of us are born not living in two family homes or divorced into two family homes. And we really don't, we really don't have the wisdom of a mother and father. And so I like our study tonight because we look at the wisdom of a mother and a father. <clears throat> in Proverbs chapter 3, and also in Proverbs chapter 31. Proverbs chapter 31 is a, is a man telling a story, right? He's telling a story of what his mother said to him. And so there is godly wisdom that God places within the mother that is needed for the son and the daughter, so that the lesson while being taught to the son, the daughter can listen to and say, that a man that is worth his salt and gold, he, what is his weight in gold? A man that is worth his weight in gold, then certainly it is the type of man that a godly father would be telling his son how to honor, how to be honorable in his family and the like. So it becomes so important. Proverbs thirty one a godly mother telling her son, this is what a godly woman should be like, and she should be marked by wisdom. And throughout the book of Proverbs, you hear this, you hear the story of wisdom. Wisdom is spoken of as a woman. She is more precious than rubies, and all you can desire are not to be compared to her, speaking of wisdom. And then when we get to Proverbs chapter 31, we get to the last 10 verses. And in the last 10 verses, all of a sudden, wisdom puts on human flesh and becomes what, uh, what he calls or refers to as a virtuous woman. Wisdom personified is a virtuous woman. And so many times we don't have we don't know what to give to our children and how to coach them and 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 get them and keep them on the right path and for them to be godly men and women to be Christian in their life and living. The book of Proverbs is a powerful book. Although it is filled with gender pieces, it, it, it there are cautionary tales in there. You know, I suggest that if you are a young man or a young woman that, or young at heart, that you, you read the book of Proverbs and it talks about how to build family, how to keep it all together. So if you join me tonight in talks my father never had with me, talks my mother never had with me, that would have changed my life if I would have heard them over and over again. These same talks, even at your age and even at the age of your children and grandchildren can still change the lives of the loved ones whom God has given you to parent 
and walk with and live life with. So without any further ado, I pray that the Holy Spirit will illuminate the words. If you are weary and you said, I, I don't know what to give my son, I don't know what to give my daughter, wisdom is timeless. It comes from God. Wisdom, is, as Miss Alberta would say, is knowledge guided by understanding. That is not just enough to have knowledge. It's important to have understanding. It's important that we use wisdom when counseling our children and counseling our friends and family and loved ones. With wisdom, you learn that you don't have to win in order to win. So if you would, let's turn to Proverbs chapter three. It's a great book. It's been with me for a long time. In fact, this was the one of the first, this was the one of the first passages of scripture that I remembered and it changed my life, and it continues to change my life to this day. So, so glad to have you with us, and, and so glad that you are here with us. So, praise God, hallelujah. And so, here we go. Proverbs chapter 3. Let me put it up on the screen for you. It's a wonderful, you know, how do I I was, I was the only child. There wasn't any boys or girls in my, in my, uh, weren't, weren't any boys in my family or there weren't any girls in my family. I don't know. I never saw it. The word of God gives us wisdom and instruction. Proverbs chapter three. I love again, Bible gateway because I can look at the, the various versions right here. The new King James version, contemporary English version, the English standard version. Uh, ESV, I like. I think it's the one. I think it's about the closest to the literal translation, keeping the meaning and the like. Um, so that if they say my son, it, it it might it has something to do with the gender relationships of that day. That gives us clearer understanding. But you have all three that you can look at. In Proverbs chapter three, Solomon is speaking to his son. Solomon, one of the wisest men in, that has ever lived. If you are going to live your life and you're going to have mentors, people that have wisdom and have learned the truth and the value of doing things God's way, Solomon would be one of those folks. He was known for his wisdom. And so he has this conversation with his son. And he says to him, my son, verse one, do not forget my teachings, but let your heart keep my commandments. For length of days, long life, and peace will they give you. The length of days and years of life and peace, they will add to you. Let me tell you something. When a father speaks to his son and daughter and shares wisdom, it adds years of life to them, and it adds peace to their life. When you share wisdom with your children, they need to hear wisdom, not old wives tales, not game recognized game and street recognized street. If you are preparing your children for, for the street, they belong to the streets, then you give them that. But if you want them to have something more, they've got to know how to live a better way, a more excellent way. Proverbs gives us that. Chapter three, he says, let, let not steadfast love and faithfulness forsake you. Bind them about thy neck and write them on the tables of your heart. Don't let mercy and truth forsake you. The King James would say, Bind them about thy neck, write them upon the tables of your heart. Be merciful. Don't let it forsake you because you will write off relationships too fast that you may need later. Don't take a snapshot of someone who offended you a year ago and you're still mad with them a year later. Release them. Let not mercy and truth forsake you. Bind them around your neck. Write them on the tables of your heart. Why? What will happen when I do that? And son, my daughter, you will find favor and good understanding. 
good success in the sight of men. Oh, I, I just want to read them all. And so find favor and high esteem in the sight of God and man. God and people will like you and consider you a success. You will find favor and good success in the sight of God and men when you don't let mercy and truth forsake you. The truth is such a powerful thing that people know that when they ask you a question, you will be honest with them. You will be accurate with them. You will be truthful with them. And then he says, sharing wisdom, it is wisdom, son, my daughter, trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not unto your own understanding. In all your ways, acknowledge him and he will, shall direct your paths. Look, the, the greatest commandments, what? Love the Lord thy God with all thy, thy heart, your mind, your strength. And if you will acknowledge God in everything that you're doing, in all your ways that you travel, acknowledge God. Don't take the shortcut. Don't take the life hack. Don't take the, don't do it. But in all your ways, acknowledge him. God has made a promise. He will clear the road for you to follow. Oh, I love that in the CV in the, in the center there. He'll clear the road for you to follow. He will make straight your paths. He will direct the pathway that is for you when you are acknowledging him to God be the glory. I know we're saying this is for our son. I'm getting excited about it. Verse seven, do not be wise in your own eyes. Fear the Lord and depart from evil. Turn away from it. Don't ever think that you are wise enough but respect the Lord and stay away from evil. Stay in the sweet spot. It's like on the tennis racket. You want to hit the ball right in the middle, not, not, not close to the edge. Stay in the middle. Son, this is your father talking to you. I love you. I want God's best for you. And if you will do that, son, Fear the Lord and apart from evil. It will be health to your flesh and strength to your bones. It will make you healthy and you will feel strong. It will be like healing to your flesh and refreshments. You I don't know, in your bones. And then honor the Lord is. God is blessing you and, and promoting you on your job and you're earning more money. Honor the Lord with your possessions and with the first fruits of all of your increase. Honor the Lord. I don't know. Well, you know, we teach in tithe and this man is saying, honor the Lord with your possessions and with the first fruit of all of your increase giving him your money in the first part of all of your crop and the first part of all of your crop. Honor the Lord with your wealth and with the first fruit of everything that you produce. And when you do that, then your barns will be filled with plenty and, and, and your and your your vats will burst forth with new wine. Then when you will have more grain and grapes than you will ever need. And look, when God is chastising you, don't despise it. And don't detest God's corrections. Don't let it make you bitter when God corrects you, don't be weary of his reproof. For the Lord reproves, chastises, corrects those whom he loves. As a father, the son in whom he delights. The Lord corrects everyone that he loves, just as parents correct their favorite child. 
for whom the love, Lord loves, he corrects just as a father, the son in whom he delights. He never stop coaching and you cannot stop being open for somebody speaking into your life and coaching you. It becomes so important that you be able to be coached up in life, to be able to receive from people. I remember uh, uh, my business partner, he had a daughter playing on the US national team, played soccer for a number of years. And I remember him saying, you know, um, that it was, it was a time when the coach was getting on some folks and over and over again, and the people were getting mad because the coach stopped getting on them. He said, and he, he told him, he said, look, when the coach stops coaching you, then he's through with you. He's finished with you. He says that you are unredeemable, that this is it, that I've gone as far as I can take you. The Bible says that God chastens whom he loves, and you have to teach your children, even at young age, with their mother, their father. It is because they care about you. They love you. There's no power trip or anything like that, because when you teach them that, what happens? They began to believe that, and, and they lose the ability to be coached up. Verse 13, a person who finds wisdom, knowledge guided by understanding, and the man who gains understanding will be happy. And God blesses everyone who has wisdom and just a little common sense. So blesses the one who finds wisdom and the one who gets understanding for the gain from her, speaking of wisdom, is better than silver. And her profit, wisdom, is better than gold. Wisdom is more th worth more than silver, and it makes you much richer than gold, having the understanding. Oh my gosh, I often say this is so important that our children know this and they hear it over and over again, right? And as you're reading Proverbs, parents, then you're, you'll begin to see sections for where your children are at various stages of their life. Verse 15 my, is one of my favorites. She, wisdom, is more precious than rubies, and all the, the things that you may desire cannot be compared to her. Wow. She is more precious. Wisdom is more valuable than precious jewels. Nothing you want compares to her. There is nothing like having an understanding of which way to go. And when you have her, long life is in her right hand and in her left hand, riches and honor. When you have wisdom, her ways are ways of pleasantness and all her paths are peace. When you are born again, one of the things that when you and I are born again, and the Lord fills our spirit, little s, spirit, with his Holy Spirit, capital S, then there are parts of us that become alive we're beginning to operate in the word, uh, some call it the word of wisdom, the word of knowledge. And the word of wisdom, word of knowledge, it is, it is a knowing, it is an unction of what to do in a given time because you have knowledge guided by an understanding that does not come from men. And so when you have wisdom, it makes you amazingly competitive in any field of human endeavor 
because you have a knowing that goes beyond learning and experience that comes from the illumination of the Holy Spirit. And the Lord will not make you to be ashamed and he will make even your enemies to be at peace with you and he will not allow you to be blindsided. That, my friend, is very, very powerful. That is a competitive edge that you have. When you are born again, your spirit becomes alive and that part of you, the your conscience becomes alive to where you have a sense of knowing the difference between right and wrong which becomes so powerful. But even more than that, we also have this competitive edge of wisdom, the knowledge guided by understanding in, in so many key areas. Imagine if you would have had that years ago, the difference that it would have made in your life. Imagine the difference it will make in your children's life. Wow. Verse 18, she, speaking of wisdom, is a tree of life to those who take hold of her, and happy are all who retain her, right? Those who hold her fast are called blessed. Wisdom is a life-giving tree, the source of happiness for all who embrace wisdom. The Lord by wisdom founded the earth. By understanding, he established the heavens. Wow. By his knowledge, the depths were broken up and clouds dropped down like dew. My son, let them not depart from your eyes. Keep sound wisdom and discretion. Wow. Don't lose sight. Wisdom and discretion are so very important. Things that you share with your children. I like verse 21 in the CEV. My child, use common sense and sound judgment. Don't make simple things complicated by convoluting them with these flawed logic models. Always keep them in mind. Verse 22, and if you will do that, they will be life for your soul and adornment for your neck. There will be a grace about you because you have them. Then you will walk safely in your way and your foot will not stumble. You can be secure as you move forward. And when you lie down, you will not be afraid. Yes, you will lie down and your sleep will be sweet. Wow. So do not be afraid of sudden terror, nor of trouble from the wicked when it comes, for the Lord will be your confidence and will keep your foot from being caught, from you being ensnared. God has got you. He's not going to let you get caught up. You can be sure that the Lord will protect you from all harm. But son, remember, daughter, remember. Talk about talks my father never had with me. Talks my mother never had with me. Have the talks. There's so many lessons in here that if followed, then your children will be, not be a Christian, but they will be Christian in their ways. They will be good people. Verse 27, teach them, do not withhold good from those to whom it is due. When it is in the power of your hand to do so, do good. Don't say to your neighbor, go and come back and tomorrow I will give it when you have it with you. 
Don't play games. Don't plan evil against your neighbor who dwells trustingly beside you. Don't be mean to them. For he dwells by you for safety's sake. Your neighbor is, can be a blessing. You don't want them to turn an eye, but you have to teach this to your sons and your daughters, sharing the wisdom that comes from God. Do not strive with a man without cause if he has done you no harm. Don't be arguing just to be arguing <laughs> when you haven't been hurt. Do not contend with a man for no reason when he hasn't done anything to you because Charlie has a problem with Jack. Don't let that be your problem. And then don't be jealous of cruel people or follow their example. You don't want to envy a man of violence. You don't want to choose their ways for the devious person is an abomination to the Lord, but the upright are in his confidence. But anyone who is dishonest, God doesn't like them but God allows good people to be his friends. Remember, though the wicked folk may have some traits that appeal to your flesh, the curse of the Lord is on the house of the wicked man or the wicked woman, but he blesses the home of the just. Now, towards the scorners, he is scornful, but towards the humble, verse 34, he gives favor. He gives grace to them. The Lord sneers at those, you know, sneers at those that sneer at God, that mock God, that are always talking about sky daddy this and all these little things, but he is kind to everyone that is humble. My son, the wise will inherit honor, but fools shall have the wages of disgrace. If you stick with God, you will be praised. If you walk humbly before him, if you are wise, but you will be disgraced if you are a stubborn fool. I like what it says here in the King James, New King James, the wise shall inherit glory, but shame shall be the legacy of fools. And look, we say, well, I don't know what to talk with my kids about. I don't know, you know, I didn't have anybody. You all, you can't even get past this especially if you start putting in your life examples. God's word is good for giving direction. God's word is good for coaching your children, for letting them know that some things are right and some things are wrong and reminding one another that some things are right and some things are wrong while we are coaching them sharing with them and going, going through life and traveling alongside, you always have something to give your children no matter what age they are at. They need God's word and not your rhetoric. They need to hear, thus saith the Lord, this is tried and true, to God be the glory. talks my father never had with me, it's not too late because God the Father has written down his words of wisdom 
in the Bible, in the Old Testament and New Testament. How then shall we live? We've heard about, oh, the Proverbs 31 woman, Proverbs 31 woman. Well, here it is, a man telling the Proverbs 31, rehearsing it. His mother thought enough of him to tell him something more than don't take no wooden nickels. And we still saying that today, and we hadn't had wood, wooden nickels in 250 years. And we still tell him, don't take no wooden nickels. Don't let nobody make a fool out of you. And God gives us his word. One of the greatest things we can do is teach our sons how to identify a godly wife, a wife that he can build with, using those same words of, of while teaching the son what to look for, teaching the daughter what to be. And so Proverbs 31 is King Lemur recounting what his mother had told him. He did not forget. Train up your children in the way that they go, and when they are older, they will not repart, depart from it. And that's what Proverbs 31 was about. The type of woman that a godly mother would want her son to marry, and we don't use it as much as we should. And the type of woman that a daughter needs to be. In Proverbs 31, the king begins talking as he recants what his mother taught him, the wisdom of his mother. And it doesn't start with the woman, it starts with him. Let's take a look at that, Proverbs 31, amen? Uh, we love it, we look at it, Proverbs 31. Proverbs 31, King Lemuel's mother taught him. My son, Lemuel, verse two, what are you doing, my son? What are you doing, son of my womb? What are you doing, son? of my vows. You know, right away, I'm just going to tell you, you know, that boy is out there utensiling his life away, right? And, you know, garden utensiling, you know what I'm talking about, he's utensiling his wife, and I love, and that, that's why I love the ESV, right? Because when I look at the CEV in the middle, my son Lemuel, you were born in answer to my prayers, so listen carefully. Don't waste your life chasing after women. This has ruined many kings. Now, there's nothing, there's nothing wrong with cutting through the chase, Right? But I love it in the New King James Version and in the ESV, she begins with asking a question. This is a time of encounter when you see them going wrong. A mother's words, they stay with a son, speak the truth, whether they receive them in the moment or not. Make sure that you sow the word of truth into your sons and your daughters because they'll have to process those words. Don't let it be that they say, why did not anyone tell me? What are you doing, my son? What are you doing, son of my womb? What are you doing, the son of my vows? Do not give your strength to women, your ways to those who destroy kings. Oh, 
I'm telling you something that is not just a good thing to do. This will kill your reputation. This will destroy God's plans for your life. These folks that you are playing with, you may be playing with the devil. The old preacher used to say, but he's not playing with you. Let me warn you, they will destroy everything that God has been building with you. Don't waste your life chasing after men, chasing after women. This has ruined a many of God's royal blood. It is not for kings, O Lemuel. It is not for kings to drink wine, nor for princes to drink strong drink. I don't want to act like this is normal. Somebody's got to tell you the truth, because in the absence of truth, a lie will prevail. Why is that a problem? Verse 5, because when you drink, you will forget the law and pervert the judgment of any of the afflicted. You don't want to do that. Give strong drink unto them that is ready to perish and wine unto those that be of heavy hearts. Drinking makes you forget your responsibilities. And when you do, you wind up mistreating the poor. So if you see somebody that is dying, use a strong drink for that. Let him drink and forget his poverty and remember his misery no more. But open your mouth for the dumb in the cause of all such as are appointed to destruction. Son, that's not for you. Oh, you got a little hangover, huh? Oh, no. Open your mouth, judge righteously, and plead the cause of the poor and the needy. God has placed you here for a greater purpose than to waste your life. Don't waste your life. Open your mouth for the mute, for those that have no voice. Open your mouth for the rights of all who are destitute. Open your mouth, son, to judge righteously, to defend the rights of the poor and the needy. You must defend those who are helpless and have no hope. Be fair and give justice to the poor and the homeless. But you need to be in your right mind. And when you are drinking, when you've given yourself the strong drink, then you are outside of your purpose and God's reason for your being. Before you were in your mother's room, let me remind you, my son, the Lord knew you. Before, when you were in your mother's womb, he anointed you, set you apart. Don't waste your life. Proverbs 31, the last book, and as it's being written, it comes back to the woman of wisdom. Who can find a virtuous woman for her price is far above rubies. The heart of her husband doth safely trust in her so that he shall have no need of spoil. No, I'm good. I don't want anything free that doesn't belong to me. She will do him good and not evil all the days of her life. She's talking to him, comparing the trifling woman who he talked about a few minutes ago. The one that has taken down kings, 
let alone just average men. These are talks I never had with my mother. Talks I never had with my father. A truly good wife is more precious than treasure. Her husband depends on her and she never lets him down. Wow. He trusts her and he will have no lack of gain because when a man and a woman come together and they are jointly fit, son, it's a difference between that and you having the harlot. need to get a hold of this sister. The one that I'm talking about, she works willingly with her hands. She's like a merchant ship that's out on the sea. She's coming into port and she brings with her food from afar. In other words, she's a blessing to have on your team's son. Get a woman. that is for you. Where the why is not silent when you say your woman. I learned that today where the why is silent, your, oh, our woman got it. It makes a difference when you have that one that comes alongside and she appreciates you, son. She rises also while it is yet night and gives meat to her household and a portion to her maidens. She considers a field and buys it with the fruit of her hand. She planteth a vineyard and the daughter sits here listening to mother talking to elder brother. And the daughter's listening. I want to, I want to have, I want to have king and I want to prosper one day when I'm married husband. So I, I want to be good to him every day of my life. And with my own hands, I want to make clothes. I want to add to She is like a sailing ship, it says, that brings the food from across the sea. She is like the ships that merchants bring in things from afar. She knows how to buy land and to plant. She knows when to buy and sell. And she works hard. She dresses herself with strength and makes her arms strong. Verse, eight, uh, verse 18, she knows when to buy or sell and she stays busy until late at night. She is industrious. She spends her own clothes and she helps the poor and the needy. She understands that what she's producing is profitable and her lamp does not go out at night because in spite of all that, she makes sure that there is lamp in her oil, which was the mark of a foolish virgin and a wise virgin in the parables. She puts her hands to the spindle. She opens her hand to the poor and reaches out her hands to the needy and her family has warm clothing. And so she doesn't worry when it snows because she's prepared for what's coming. So I wanna let you know that if you pick, if you choose the one you can build with, 
she does her own sewing and everything that she wears is beautiful. And look, son, you know, not like the one that I talked about at the beginning, but her husband, not her as opposed to her. Her husband is well known, is a well known and respected leader in the city. The harlot that I mentioned earlier, her husband is a cautionary tale. The daughter's listening. I don't want my husband to be a cautionary tale on marrying a foolish woman. I want my husband's testimony to be this of the one that marries the virtuous woman. Mm. She makes her close the cell at the shop. She is strong and graceful as well as cheerful about the future. Her words are sensible and her advice is thoughtful. Son, that's the type of woman you want to marry. And, and at the same time, daughter, that's the type of woman, of wife one day that you need to be. Verse 27, she takes good care of her family and is never lazy. Her children praise her and with great pride, her husband say, says, there are many good women, but you are the best. Wow, what a compliment. I see that the little sisters to the side taking it in. I want my husband to say, there are many good women, but I am the best. These are talks many of our mothers and fathers never had with us, but because of God's words, we can have the talks. Verse 30, charm can be deceiving and beauty fades, but a woman who honors the Lord deserves to be praised. Wow. I like verse 29, 28, her children rise up and call her blessed. My mama bless y'all. Her husband also. He rises up and calls her blessed too. And he praises her. Many women have done excellently. But you surpass them all. Charm is deceitful. And beauty is vain. It fades. But a woman who fears the Lord is to be praised. Now, son, when you come across her, she's rare. She's a rare jewel. So when you meet her, show her respect. Praise her in public for what she has done. Give her of the fruit of her hands and let her works praise her in the gates, in the marketplace. It's so important that there were a thousand talks, maybe that our mothers or our fathers never had with us, but God has made those talks available in his word, and we are able to share them with our children. In the book of Proverbs is these, this book, collection of writing from several authors who've grown wise enough and deep enough to make men and wise enough and deep enough to make women. 
can enrich your life and enrich my life and give us something that we can share with our children and our children's children that will bring long life and peace to them and prosperity and blessing to them. Oh my gosh, there's so much that's there. Had I known, well, the least that I could do is now that I do know that I can now share the truth of God's word in Proverbs, in Titus 2, in, 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 in uh, 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 Tim, uh, 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 2, I believe it is, uh, uh, where, where, where Paul calls him close and he says, look, Find thee a few faithful men and commit what you've seen and heard of me. Commit it to them. It's not too late. You have something of value to give to your children and your children's children. It's not too late. God's word, it brings life health to their navel and marrow to their bones. Talks my mother never had with me. Talks my father never had with me. Are really just God's word. I remember my father saying, God rest his soul. This is the day that he died eight years ago. 2013, is that right, eight years ago, nine now? I remember him saying, this guy had changed his life. Before, when my sons came to me, I had nothing to give them because I never had talks with my father. I never had talks with my mother. He said, but now when they come to me, I have the word of God to give them. Maybe you never had anyone to share the wisdom of God with you. But praise be to God, because of his written word, you have the opportunity to share God's word with your children, with your children's children, with the children of your siblings, your nieces, and nephews, your cousins with those that are in your circle. Let's not pass on foolishness, but let's pass on wisdom. We can't afford to blow it off. Too many lives are dependent upon us, giving them something to hold on to that will not change or fade. God's word is from everlasting to everlasting and will never fail. Well, look, we love you. God's grace and peace to you. I wanna encourage you to spend time with those that you love. Spend time reading God's word so that you can have the wisdom of God and the truth that makes you free. Why? Because in the absence of truth, a lie prevails. I want to pray with you just for a moment that you will walk in the power of the anointing that is upon your life because God has amplified your voice in the hearts of your children. You don't have to scream. You don't have to argue. It's not in the earthquake, it's not in the wind, it's not in the storm, but in a still small voice, God has amplified your voice in the hearts of your children so that a whisper can reach the deepest places in them. I wanna pray with you. that you would allow God to use you to, 
to share wisdom and speak truth into the lives of your children that you would have the courage to do it. Why don't you bow your head for with me for a moment. Father God, I thank you that new beginnings are not just for the young. I thank you, Lord God, that when we don't know what to do, you do. Your word is sure and your word is true. And we thank you for your word, God. And we pray, oh God, that as we speak your word, which is good seed, that it will find good ground in the hearts of our children, our grandchildren, our beloved ones. I pray, God, that we would remind them of your word, remind them of your promises, remind them of the cautionary warnings that you give us, and remind them, oh God, of your love for us. That you are wooing us, that your love is reaching out to us. And oh God, when we realize that, may it may we receive the value of having the God of the universe desiring to know us, the God of the universe investing in his only begotten son that we might be reconciled together. Oh, the joy that floods my soul. Father, I pray for that mother, that father, Lord God, that says maybe it's too late, but oh God, I thank you that your word is true, that a live dog is better than a dead lion. For where there is life, there is hope. Father, this is not a message to beat up on ourselves for our shortcomings, Lord God, but a message for us to embrace the opportunities that are yet with us. So, Father, I pray, touch that brother, that sister, Lord, that is uncertain, Lord. Let them respond with faith. Let them trust in you, O oh God. Let them respond with faith in you, my God. And, Father, we will be sure to give you the praise, the honor, and the glory. It's in Christ's name that we pray. Amen. Look, God bless you. I hope that this bless you. Make sure that your children, our children, do not say that that's a, that's a talk that my parents never had with me. Amen. Well, look, God's blessing to you. God's grace. And we will see you Sunday morning. God loves you. God cares about you. God has invested in you so you have value. How much is your child worth to you, your son? Yeah, the favorite one. How much is he worth to you? Imagine you investing that so others might know God. Wow. That would be a lot of value for trade. What a deposit that the father makes to let us know how much he loves us. Oh, how he loves you and me. Oh, how he loves you and me. He gave his life. What more could he give? Oh, how he loves you. Oh, how he loves me. Oh, how God loves you and me. God bless you and have a great night.